All right, everyone, we have some big news today. Pegaxi just released their new game. I'm going to take you through it. I'm going to show you how to breed, rent, play it. We're going to mess up, maybe, hopefully not. If you like this content, please like, subscribe, and without further ado, let's get into this. So first thing I'm going to do is press play right here. We're just going to enter it right from the get-go. And the first place we come to is the marketplace. This is where you can buy Pegas, you can sell them, you can bid on them. Uh, this one looks like a pretty good deal right here, 950. But as I said before in my last video, you can also get these on OpenSea. And if we head over to OpenSea, this is my OpenSea account, this is my Pega, and we're just gonna go over to Pegaxi Pega. And we can see that floor price is now, what is that in US dollars? That is about $1,000. So floor price is $1,000. So you can actually pick them up for cheaper on the marketplace for about 950 USD if you wanted to. But of course, this is all auctions. These are all being bid on. So that is the kind of caveat. Now, before I do anything else, let's head over to racing and just see what one of these games looks like. So I'm going to be honest with you. I have not done this before. I did try out the breeding a little, but the racing is new. So let's try and just see if we can even get in a race. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna pick a Pega. This is assuming, of course, that you already have one. I have Trillionaire. This is my Clin that I was uh, that I bought during the whitelist event, uh, I think it was two weeks ago. And now this is the first time I'm trying it out. So let's give it a, let's give it a whirl. Let's press start, approve this. So you're just allowing the uh, contract to basically use this Pega in the race. And that is beneficial. That means, you know, this is essentially a transaction that you have to make. The The races, I think, are recorded on chain. So you just make this one transaction and then you're you're pretty much done. Then you can race it as much as you want. Now let's do uh, move. Again, this is, <laughs> I'm experimenting here. I don't know what I'm doing. So hopefully I don't lose my Pega. <laughs> but we'll see. This is an experiment. This is an experiment. So it's loading right now. All right, so now we're just waiting for a match. We're waiting for the race to automatically put me in. Okay, they found my match. Now I'm going to sign. Got it. Okay, and now we're just in the race, and now we're going to see if we win. So there's my horse, Trillionaire, right there. And as you can see, this is a 2D environment. They're going to move this to 3D eventually, but right now they're trying to experiment with the economy. They're trying to work out the kinks, and they figure that they just want to get the game out. I think that's a smart choice. I think you get the game out, you experiment, you test it out, see what you can do. All right, and now we're racing. My, your racehorse is highlighted right there. That's how you know it's yours. I don't know what this gold means. Oh, founding. That's a founding Campona. Oh no, that's just the name. Okay. All right, all right. Uh, my horse is, I don't know. I think my horse Trillionaire is doing a good job here. I mean, kind of, kind of working it. You know, I think the name Trillionaire is a good name. It's it's like, okay, the name is Trillionaire. Maybe the AI, like, recognizes something in that. You know, it knows. Oh, no, I'm, I see, now I'm losing. Now these guys are winning. Okay, so these highlights mean that you're coming in first, I think. That's what that means. First, second, third. Oh, come on, Trillionaire. What are you doing? What are you doing to me? You know, in Zed Run, this really matters. Like, you have to make sure your horse is like some horses are optimized for like lower mileage and some horses horses are optimized for more. Okay, guys, we're gonna watch this whole thing. I'm not taking my eyes off it. You can see up here is the prize pool, right? Oh gosh, oh come on, trillionaire, what are you doing? What are you doing to me? Oh, come on. Oh, you got these three guys up here, man. That's who's winning. You got Corey hashed. Oh, come on. Ah, no, 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 no. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I jinxed it. I jinxed it, man. All right. All right. I'll deal with it. I'll deal with it. Trillionaire came in 11th. Uh, I jinxed it. All right. All right. Well, that's it for that. Okay. But as you can see, we have the winners right here. I should show you my Zed Run game. That's where I get the real uh, the real wins. My my digital ones and zeros go crazy in that game. But anyway, 
Yeah, so as you can see, the token right here is, uh, I think it's VIS. So these are the winnings. So first place got 105, 44, 26, and so on. And if we go back to my assets and just kind of check out how my horse is doing, you can see Trillionaire will go to details. And we can see that now I have one race on record that's recorded on the blockchain. And, you know, we see the distance and the class. And I think we can also see my stamina. Yeah, so this is my energy. So basically when this bar is low, that means I'm done racing for the day. I can't race anymore. So yeah, that ate into my energy a little bit, but I can still race if I want. So another thing you can do is you can actually, if I wanted to take my horse out of the contract, I can just press this take back button. And this will basically take my Pega out of the contract and back into my uh, back into my roster here. So let's just, and as you can see, again, it's pending. I'm using my Matic mainnet on my MetaMask. So all of the transactions in Peg Axis, all of the game mechanics, all of that happens on Matic. So make sure you're on the Matic mainnet. Make sure you're doing all your transactions on that network. And now you can see that I am in resting position. And if we go back over here, we can see that now my status is resting instead of racing. Now, I think what I can do is if I want to, and I'm just gonna try this, I think I can just hop back right back into a race if I want. And again, like I'll just approve. And the thing is, is that I kind of messed up on this because I'm approving this twice. Really what you're supposed to do is just approve it once in the contract, it's in the contract, and then you can basically race until your energy is completely wiped out for the day. Now, I just wanted to show you one last thing before I exit out of the racing and we discuss something else. The thing I forgot to mention is you see these stats up here. I got fire, lightning, strength, speed, wind, water. All these stats are going to matter. And if we look down here with the Stadium Metaverse, we can see that we have temperature, we have directions, we have, you know, is it cold, is it hot? So all of these stats right here are going to be things that you have to keep in mind when you're strategizing about these races and, and kind of knowing, you know, how to win. So there's going to be player strategy involved. And a lot of it is going to have to do with these weather conditions and race conditions. Clins, which is the breed of my horse, are supposed to be really good with wind conditions. That's what they're supposed to be super good against. All right, guys. Now, I had to skip ahead a little bit. But in that last race, as you can see, I did come in third. So Trillionaire came in third and I won 26 VS tokens. And if I want to keep playing, I just press next match. So let's just go back to my assets and see if these tokens show up or, or see where they show up. So if we go over to this wallet icon, you can see that I have VIS and it's locked. I have 26 VIS, what I won, it's locked for 18 days. So payouts occur after that time period. And this is the same if you have a scholarship. So if you're being paid in VIS for running a scholarship or leasing your horse out to the race market, then you will be paid after 18 days. And that's just kind of how it goes. So speaking of scholarships, let's check out the renting market. So this is the super interesting part about Pegaxi is this whole renting market. So there's a couple different ways you can rent. And this is what you go, if you don't have a Pegaxi, this is what you'll first see. You can either rent through paying PGX token. And as you can see, some of the rent prices are like 100, which is pretty pretty cheap right now. That should be like, what, $30 for a, for a day at the racetrack or something like that. Uh, they get higher. Um, I think that this might be a little overpriced, this 25. I think you should probably stick for right now with just the lower priced PGX. That's just my opinion. Um, but, oh, and it's a fortunate that we're not seeing it right now, but a, a while ago there was that 60% thing. And I'm going to tell you what that is as well. Uh, and I'm going to do it by showing you how I would rent out one of my horses. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this back from the market. I'm just going to confirm. Okay, so I'm gonna click on this. And as you can see, I have a couple options here. I can transfer, I can sell, I can rent. We're gonna rent. And I have two different types of renting that I can do here, or a few. I can rent direct. So this is if I had a scholar in mind and I have their address. I can rent direct to them and I can kind of set how much I want them to take of the profits if they win any or how much I want. So I could do 2080 or so on and so forth. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna rent public. There's two ways I can do it. I can rent in PGX, which is what most people are doing. 
And the reason they're doing it is because, again, this is a racing game. There's no guarantee that your horse is going to get a lot of profit. So a lot of people just want the money up front rather than having to rent it out for a percentage if the person wins. You know, the thing about racing games is as they scale, the more unlikely it is that someone's going to win. So that's why a lot of people, I think, in the renting marketplace are doing it this way. They just want PGX token up front instead of having it come out of the rewards that a player or a scholar could possibly win. But this profit sharing thing is very innovative. So I can kind of choose the percent and I can just put this on the public market for anyone to use. And this could possibly scale out. I mean, say, you know, maybe if a lot of people end up using my horses, I mean, that could that could scale into something. So that could be, a, you know, kind of a pretty interesting uh, mechanic. And all I do here is I, of course, I just approve it. Um, and let's let's just try this out to see what happens. All right, and now that it's approved, I'm going to list to rent, and I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do 35. We're just going to give, we're just going to give them a really high earning percentage and see what happens. You know, trying to be trying to be competitive here with the other renters. You know, you can use my horse for free, or you can use their horse for money. We'll see what happens. All right, and now you see I am renting it. And let's just kind of, I can view the transaction, but let's just see what that looks like. Okay, yeah, trillionaire. So 65% for you. So if they win, they get 65%. So we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll come back to this. And if we go back to my assets, I can see that anytime I want, I can take it back from the renting contract anytime I want. So yeah, and if I, if I win tokens, great. It'll show up in my wallet and you know it'll all be good. All right, guys, and as you can see, I've already been raced. So already someone has selected my horse and they are racing it. And I can tell because my energy is going down. And also I see a third race in here. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see if I win. We can also see some new statistics up here. I have a win rate of 50%. Uh, my last race was, uh, I think this is 1-1. One, one. I, I, I'm not sure what that means. I think this is... Uh, win rate maybe or how many times i came in first first second i'm not really sure but yeah so let's just go to my renting history you can see right here that i have a renter this is the address and they're using my horse in the contract right now so we'll see how that goes as far as game mechanics work i'm not sure if this is good for your horse or bad for your horse is it good that someone is racing your horse constantly and kind of you know is that going to affect my win rate does the win rate matter I mean, these are all factors to consider that kind of combine, you know, making money with games. It's like, okay, so I'm leasing it out, but is it is it really a good thing that someone is racing my horse to exhaustion? Is that going to affect my statistics in the game? Right now, the game is completely RNG-based, so it's completely just random number generator. They say that very minimal stats play into the game right now, but that could change. So these are all things to keep in mind. So let's talk about breeding real quick. So let's just head on over to the breeding tab. And my horse Trillionaire is not showing up because she is currently being rented. My other horse is just a little baby horse, so she's not showing up either. If we click on the details, we, uh, we have like three days until we can rent her and three days until we can breed. So we can't really do anything with this horse until then. But I made a video on this earlier today because I did this this morning, so let's just hop into that. So as you can see, I have my horse, Trillionaire, right here, and she's in the market, and now I'm gonna look for a mate for Trillionaire. And I'm not gonna lie to you, this took me about 18 minutes to do, so I'm gonna kinda of skip around in this video, but it was very hard to find partners because I think demand was so high, so I kept getting this notice up here. But yeah, it was just very hard. And I was looking for, you know, lower priced horses to breed with. But yeah, so it took me forever. I'm not going to bore you with all the details. So if you have a male peg already, you don't have to worry about this. You don't have to engage in the market contract or anything. I My strategy that I ended up going with is I just refreshed the page until I got this really cheap pega for 500 PGX. Just probably just bred. And then I just, it, it worked. It ended up working. And I chose a random name, which you can do. You just approve it there. And then um, if we just kind of skip ahead right here, you can see, yeah, you get this message. That's what the baby Pega looks like. And 
that's pretty much all there is to it. And now I have my little baby Pega. Now it's really beneficial to breed, but you don't want to do it too much because, especially with a founding Pega, because if we go to my founding Pega, you can see I now have one breed count. Oh man, I have been raced quite a bit. That is, uh, that is pretty crazy. Let's see if I've earned anything. Wow. Wow. So yes, yeah, so renting it out to the market, that really does scale up. Already, you see that I've gone from 26 to 62 in a matter of just 15 minutes. So yes, yeah, so definitely the earning opportunity here is to say, screw the renting. I'm just going to I'm just going to do profit sharing because hey, they're going to take the free pega over the rented pegas. That's that's a little bit of market finessing right there from uh from the mocap bear over here. <laughs> anyway, all right. So what was I say? Okay, so basically what you want to do is you don't want to breed your founding pega too much because let's be honest with the founding pegas if you own one, the breeding is probably the most valuable thing. So honestly, be very, very cautious. One of these breeds could end up being $20,000 one day. I mean, if this game scales, then you could end up, you know, one of these breeds could lead to a very expensive horse. So you really do not want to breed these guys too much. You don't, you don't want to put them on the breeding market for other people to breed. That would be my advice. What I will say is, is that breeding, though, does have its benefits because I got this female uh, Pega for very cheap price, probably only about a hundred dollars. And if we go to the uh, the value of the market, if we go to OpenSea, we can see that there's a huge price difference. So like already, this is my Peg Axie, uh, Casey Strike, and already I've gotten an offer on the Peg Axie for seven hundred fifty six dollars. So I could accept that offer at any time. I'm not going to because what my goal on this channel is to make you content. It's not really to play the market, although I do try and do that, but I want to keep this Peggy around so I can make more content and kind of experiment with this platform for you and you know just so that you can be more informed going into this game. So with that in mind, I also want to say that in my opinion, and again, this is not financial advice, but in my opinion, I would maybe hold off on buying a Pega Axie at this time. With the floor price this high, I'm not sure if it's worth it. Now, this could go up or this could go down, but what you have to keep in mind with this platform is that people are highly incentivized to breed. If you own a Peg Axie, you're very incentivized to breed more Peg Axies so that you can earn more passive income. So what's going to happen is a lot of Peg Axies are going to be bred and this floor price is going to drop because as we know, with more inflation of assets comes cheaper prices. That's just how it goes. We saw that in with so many other games. With Zed Run, we saw that where the floor, floor price is now almost nothing. If we go to some of my uh, some of my Zed Run horses, you can see right here that right now the last offer I got was I don't even know, but it, it wasn't for that much. the f The floor price on Zed Run is is very low right now. It is. Uh, Maybe even, I don't know what that is in ETH, but maybe that, yeah, $50. So look, I would say this. I would say be very cautious in purchasing a Peg Axie. I do believe these prices are going to drop as more breeding happens. And I do believe it's going to be easier to get one of these horses. That is, that is my personal belief on this platform. My strategy going forward is... I have this female. First of all, I'm not going to be breeding my founding Pega. That's just not going to happen. I'm going to I'm going to hold off on that. What I am going to do, however, is I'm going to use this Pega for breeding purposes, and I'm waiting for the floor price to drop on OpenSea to pick up a male Pega and hopefully do breeding that way, or I'll just go back into the market. But that is my strategy as of now. Now, that is about it, folks. That pretty much covers my playthrough walkthrough of peg axie we'll be doing more coverage on this game for sure i'm very intrigued by this renting system i think that's super innovative and i kind of want to see where that goes so yeah so stay tuned for more information i hope you enjoyed this content if you did please like subscribe hit the bell notification helps me out a lot and i will see you next time